you guys, it's Mary with uh, Stamps and Lingers, and it is Saturday, but it is 11 o'clock Eastern Time, and I am doing a video, actually I'm going to be on twice today, so um, this is World Card Making Day, wait a minute, let me give that the importance that it requires, World Card Making Day, yay, yay, yay! I hope you are um, having a good time so far, and I know we've had a couple of really good videos. Amy and Jamie have both been on, and I know that you enjoyed what they have done. Now, I'm going to make sure I'm going to get off to the side here and just be sure that I am transmittalating and give Amy enough time to share it with the, um, with the World Card Making Day. I'm on my Stamps and Lingers page, so I'm not really sure how comments are going to work. I may have to go over to there. All right. I see Patricia and Beverly and Nancy and Barbara. Hello. Appreciate yawn. Um, Amy, I don't know if I can see comments from World Card Making Day after you've shared it or not. I'm, I'm really not sure how that's going to work. So I'm going to leave comments over there uh, to you. Hopefully it will all come across and Mr. Zuckerberg will do us right. So my video for this morning is completely different. Hey Lisa, hi Denise, uh, is completely different from this afternoon. I'm going to give you a little glimpse at the Christmas Countdown Project Kit. Now I'm going to tell you straight up, I bought this purely out of uh, curiosity because I really, really, truly wanted to know how they were going to ship this. I was awfully afraid that it would all be broken down and the first thing you'd have to do is make 25 little boxes. But the truth is, hey guys, hey Beverly, hey Darlene. Um, thank you, Amy. I hope I can see everybody's. The truth is, is that the box comes, you get this box like this, and inside is the already assembled um, countdown box. So that's kind of cool. It's got your 25 boxes all ready to go. And then it has the, and I just made a mess underneath here because I have a secret stash, but that's okay. And then it comes with all of the pieces and parts that you need to, to make your 25 little boxes. Now, next full disclosure, I don't have kids, so I no longer do a countdown uh, to Christmas. But I have seen some fun things online. You could actually do Christmas on one side and then use maybe the Spooktacular Bash and the uh, Wicked and some of the other fall Halloween and do a countdown to Halloween. So you might could do that. And then here's another one even more exciting for us crafter people before we get going. Hi, Faith. I'm appreciating it because uh, on occasion to attend. To oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, Faith. Well, the um, this post will be on my blog as well as the card that I do tonight. So you'll see those tomorrow. Not to worry. And they'll be posted on this World Card Making Day uh, for as long as Facebook stays around. Okay, so one of the perks of being a demonstrator is we get this cool little magazine uh, four times a year called The Stamp and Success. And it turns out in this quarter's is a really, really cool idea. I'm going to raise this up in case you don't need a Christmas countdown, but we all need a spot to hold on to our uh, little jewelry, our embellishments, right? And so they've shown how to make this into an embellishment um, cubby, which I think is awesome. And one of the cool things about this kit is you've actually got a couple of extra of the little box fronts so you could use them as templates. So actually you could make the whole Christmas box and then after Christmas was over, you could turn the boxes around and create your um, embellishment cubby and have that ready to go for the rest of the year. And then your kids would just have to do something different the following year. So that's just a thought. Um, this is a very cute idea, and I may even be buying another box. I think I'm going to send this to some friends um, for their little little ones to use as a Christmas countdown. But I may have to buy another one of these boxes just to make myself a little cubby. So I'm just going to give you some tips. The first is this is a project kit, which means that you... Also, if you want to stamp, you need to buy the Coordinating Christmas Countdown stamp set. Now, full disclosure, very bad Stampin' Up! demonstratormanship. 
Um, you can actually make this without the stamp set if you wanted to. I'm not recommending that because some of these are very, very cute little images and would be great on other cards. And I will probably make a card or two between now and Christmas using this set um, as a Christmas card stamp set. But you also do need to provide some, if you're going to stamp, you're going to need to provide ink in uh, Cherry Cobbler, Early Espresso, and Mossy Meadow as a minimum. And even if you're not going to stamp, you absolutely need Stampin' Dimensionals because hello, Dimensionals, and some of your liquid glue, or you could use Snail if that is what you prefer. Okay, now, what I recommend that you do first is put the box aside and take all of the parts apart. So you get, um, you actually get 28 different colors of box fronts and you get um, all of the numbers, one through 25 and some stars. And you get some sticker um, gold ribbon tags, uh, little ribbon ends and, re and cherry cobbler and some gold uh, banners and then some real cute little um, striped stickers. And you also get pine bough stickers and a pine wreath and some snowflakes and white and cherry cobbler flowers. So punch out all, your, all of your punch pieces and then I recommend, hey, wait for it, I'm going to carefully lift up the curtain so that you can see, dun, 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 whoa. I recommend that you lay them out in a five by five grid so that you can get an idea of where everything wants to be. And you can kind of make your, the uh, different box fronts be pleasing to your eye. Okay, now what's pleasing to my eye and what's pleasing to your eye may be different. So this is how mine is going to look. Um, and then I went ahead. Some of these are already done because, good Lord, Mary, would you use those extra bits to trace your Halloween paper? Yes, I absolutely would. I absolutely would. Hi, Akiko. Uh, so yes, use those extra ones as templates. Um, now, just so you know, on this cubby, they've used, um, oh gosh, come to gather designer paper as the background and then they made little strips of the coordinating color uh, to put on there and then they have adhered a sample of each of the embellishments to the front so very very easy to make and you can and you can put whatever you like in there they've got their washi tape they've got their embellishment kit pieces and parts um, so kind of a handy little dude okay so then what I did, and I would recommend it, go ahead, because why not, is put your full size, do not cut these because that's abuse, and the uh, people for the ethical treatment of dimensionals will be all over you, uh, put a couple of dimensions on the back of each of your numbers, because I like everything popped up. Okay, now just so you know, they also, sometimes people count down, apparently people count down to the 24th. If you're one of those people who does Christmas on the 24th, then you might want to do the 24th in gold. And then there's a star that you could just put for the 25th, these stars right here. So um, I, like all right-minded people, we open presents on the morning of Christmas. So the 25th is my gold one. Can you see that? Okay, I hope. All right, all right, I'm working on these for my grandsons. Yes, they will love them uh, for sides. So, um, Tanya, I don't think I would do the sides. At some point, you're going to get, th these are a pretty tight fit. So I wouldn't put anything on the sides. I would just decorate the front and the back, okay? Now, just so you know, the front, of the box has the smooth uh, front <laughs> and the back has the seam. So if you use the back, you're going to see the seam, but I think for a um, an embellishment cubby, that would be okay. So that's just me. And if you were going to buy it and not use it as a, um, as a Christmas countdown, then you could certainly use the front for your cubbies embellishments. Okay, so I've already put a few of these together. You can see this one I used early espresso and I stamped the bird image from the Christmas countdown set. 
in early espresso and then I just popped the number on with a dimensional. Uh, this one is no stamping at all, just a gold banner and a uh, bow, one of the stickers. Uh, this one is, I really like this one. First, I laid down one of the uh, wreath stickers, and then I popped the number on, and then I laid the uh, the little um, cherry cobbler bow on the top, and I did take a half of a, of a dimensional. Sometimes a dimensional must be sacrificed for the greater good, but I used a half a dimensional on the top just to kind of support it. I, I really like how that one looks. Um, this one, I stamped the pine bough in Mossy Meadow and then just added a banner and the number popped up. Uh, let's see, these little cherry cobbler ones lend themselves nicely to the uh, snowflake sentiment, now let, or the sticker. Now let me just tell you something. This would be a fun set to do with the kids that are getting this little advent calendar or countdown calendar, but I can tell you that these little stickers are delicate. So you're gonna wanna help your little friends. As you can see, it's uh, delicate. So let's go ahead and make 20, because what the heck. Now also you have a choice. Um, some people, I think, probably want to have their numbers all lined up perfectly. I kinda like um, thinking that they'll be different. So, so I'm not really worrying too much about that. It's all personal preference. So I'm gonna do this one here, like that, and then just put the number on. Easy peasy. All right, and we'll put him right there like that. Now on number 15, let's see what we're gonna do with 15. I think 15 is going to get, he's just gonna get one of these little, well, see, I've already got a sticker up there, so I think I'm going to do a gold banner. We'll do a gold banner right across that transition, like so. Pull it across. And you've got enough embellishments that you could, in fact, embellish every single one of these without ever pulling out the stamp set. Okay, and then all I'm going to do here is put this over the top. And I'm going to put him down there like that. Okay, so you can see how this goes. It's pretty easy peasy, right? I did cut a dimensional in half, Amy. I know. Did you not hear it scream? No, you didn't. Well, that's because I did it earlier. So let's do another one so that you can hear that, in fact, no matter what I say, the dimensionals are not suffering during the cutting. So let's take a wreath and pick it up gently, gently, gently. And I'm gonna put it on, let's see. So I've already got wreaths down here. Let's see if I've got anything not hooked down. Yep, I'm gonna, no, that won't work. Okay, well, I'm gonna do it anyway, cause what the heck. I'm just gonna put the wreath right in the center of my little front. And then I will pop the 21 right in the middle of him. Like so. Now I'm not going to put any more on there until I reach the end. I want to be sure I've decorated everything. And then if I have leftover embellishments, I might add one like a, like a little flower or something like that. Okay, so... Let me see what we're gonna do here with this guy. This one is gonna get a pine bough. You did not hear screaming. I couldn't hear screaming. Let's see, we're gonna do a pine bough here. And then I think I'm gonna do a red bow. No, I'm gonna do a silver banner. Like that. And then we'll put the number right over the top. So, you know, there's like no wrong answer here. No wrong answer at all. Whatever makes you happy when you look at it. And as we all know, the whole point of countdown calendars is to get candy. Because candy's what should go in them. That's what I believe. All right, now I'm going to put a... Um, I'm going to put... 
this guy right here. And you know, this is all pre-printed, pre so you don't need to do much of anything there. And I think I'll put, I'm gonna leave that like that. I kind of like that just like that, actually. Just kind of let him be plain. Let me see what else is not hooked down. Okay, 14 needs a spot. So I'm gonna do something wild. I'm gonna put this and I'm gonna put it like so. And then I'm gonna put 14. All right. Small gifts in the boxes. Oh, that's a good idea. Bye, Tanya. I'm sorry you have to work, yuck. I'm gonna put this up here like that. Okay. And let's see, 16 needs a spot, 22. You know, 22, let's go ahead and stamp 22 with the pine bough because you know me, I do love a good pine bough. I do, I love a good pine bough. And this one is a very pretty image. Okay, so I'm just going to put him aside like that. I hope you can see. Okay, there we go. Isn't that a pretty image? I love it. Get this cleaned up. And then I'm going to put my number on. And I'm gonna let him set aside like that. Okay. All right, now 23 needs a little something something. I need one more. I'm going to do 17 because I do want that last. I do want a snowflake on there. I am thinking what I'll do is now I don't even know if this is a thing. Is there like at a dollar store like a bag of little tiny gifts that would be suitable for really little babies like one year old or even, you know, one and a half that I could because what I was thinking is I would get this decorated and then I would fill each little box with a one-year-old suitable gift and mail it to my friends. So what do you think of that? And also, do you think there is any such thing as that so that I'm not spending like 20 bazillion hundred dollars on little nothings that a little tiny one-year-old can probably not even figure out? What do you think? I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a, I'm pretty certain. I feel pretty confident that I'm barking up a tree. Legos figures, do you think that would be good for a one-year-old? I don't know, do they make them like that? I don't even know. Here's a news flash, just so you know, because I learned it. Uh, this little sticker, this little stripey sticker is exactly the width of the little box front. So be sure that you don't start in the middle because you will end up short or long. But of course that one isn't because that's what I said. So I'm going to pick it up and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a smush. By smush I mean I'm gonna uncenterize it and centerize it better than I did. And because I did it before and it worked perfectly, as soon as I got on video, it stopped working perfectly. But hey, you know, whatever. Whatever. God, as if, okay. Yes, I just recently became a valley girl, which is so 80s, and I'm sorry. Okay, now I'm going to do this here, like so. One thing to be certain of is that as you are creating your um, decorations, remember that the card, the box front has to go on the front of the box, and you don't want to extend too far, or you'll infringe on its ability to go in and out, which will preclude people getting the chocolate. Okay, nobody wants to be having their chocolate precluded. I'm just saying that would ruin the whole Christmas thing entirely. All right, now I think we're gonna go one more pine bow here, because I have it. And I'm going to go like this here. And I'm gonna go with 23. Like so. 
Okay, now, unless I'm missing something in... Oh, number five. Come on, five. What are you doing? <sighs> Gosh. Five was trying to be persnickety. Was trying to be persnickety. Darn five. Okay, we'll put five right there. All right, let me see if I've got anything else. Okay, everything is stuck down. And I've got one more... Um, that is a snowflake, so I'm going to find a spot for it to live. Because, you know, everything needs everything. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to slide that under like... Oh, wait, 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 wait! Mm, emergency, emergency! If it doesn't hang over a one-inch surface, it's too small for babies. Yeah, I know. So it's got to be huge. You probably could, but it might sag. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know what we'll what I'll come up with. Maybe I'll I'll put candy in there, and he can just enjoy it in a year. All right. There's fourteen, and I've got some flower. Oh, I wanted to put a red flower or two on this wreath. I'm gonna do that, and a white flower, two. Like so. And let's see, somewhere else I had a, a single flower. I'm going to put another white flower here. I believe in using all of my stickers. You know me. If one is good, 12 is better. That's just how I roll. Okay, and I'm going to put a red one there. And let's see, I think this one is going to want, we're going to go like that right there. Pick up, Mr. Dimensional. Just pick up. Okay. Or you know what? Maybe I'll put the, I think it should go here. That's it. Look at that. I can just tuck it right under there and that'll be fine. Okay. I'm going to call it good because that is you know crazy land and let's put a few on and then uh, we're gonna call it good here pretty quick because I don't want to take up all of your day but if it was me and I was making this well I kind of am oh a pacifier might work tiny socks finger food that's a good idea size of the box thank you hang on just a second let me pull out my handy dandy ruler all right here is the front the box is two inches square. So, you know, certainly big enough for candy, just saying. Okay, so liquid glue is my uh, adhesive of choice. You could use snail if you wanted. I think any of them would work just fine. And just center it on there. And then I'll stick it back in the box to think about what it's done. And we'll go on to our next one. So this is a little mindless. And I am more than willing to say you're done if you would like to be done. If you want to just hang here, you're welcome to do that too. I'll leave the video running. And I'm just going to march through these numbers, and then I'll show you the whole doha. The whole box measures 11 and a half by 11 and a half by 2. That's correct. That's correct. And yes, Julie, you are correct. The measurements are in the catalog. All right. Any other questions or things you want to see about this adorable and you can see how it's starting to come together yeah I think it's really cute and I think it's gonna be a good little Christmas present so here's my other little tip when yours comes hang on to the box that it's packed in because once you've made it it's still going to fit oh look at that I just saved myself a step I just, because I'm a dork, I'm a dork. Okay. 
just adhere them in the box. Mary is a dork. There we go. Yeah, so this will fit right back. I believe it'll fit right back. Thank you, Martha. Yep, you can absolutely decorate both sides, Darlene. You could do Halloween on the other side, or you could do the embellishment caddy cubby. Do whatever makes you happy. And it's so cute. And I'll tell you what, you know, you'd think cardboard, but this is thick. It's thick cardboard, and these are pretty sturdy, so I think they're actually going to hold up to... Um, some ins and outs and using so I think it would actually work pretty well as an embellishment caddy cubby cubby not a caddy a cubby not a caddy a cubby I think that would be cute I may have to get myself another one I would highly urge you all to get one of these before they're gone because they're fun like I said the Christmas countdown stamp set is optional but I would put it in the the highly recommend category because it's cute and it does add to some of the boxes and it to be quite honest if I was making my cubby for my embellishments I would probably um, cut my little fronts out of the come to harvest paper the wood paper and then I would probably stamp I'd probably stamp that bow image on it because it's really cute. I have to ask my 10 and 12 years old grands if they would like to make this. I think, I mean, you know, if they're still counting down for Christmas, if, you know, if they're still doing that, this is a great way to do it. Christmas countdown calendars are fun. And, and you know what? They're not just really cheap and you can't always find them. Um, and this one you can use year after year. You can store it right in the box that it comes in. It's a good sturdy cardboard box, so it'll protect it through the years. You could just put it right back in your um, in the box and put it in your Christmas storage containers, which I'm sure everyone has because no matter how hard we try, we we can't not have that. I have this goal. I'm going to downsize. That's my goal for this year is downsize. Oh, wait. This year is almost over. I'm going to call it my goal for 2020. How about that? I'm going to call it my goal for 2020. Okay. I have to put on my craft table. Yeah. All right, guys. You know what? I'm going to let you go. And I hope you are making cards because, you know, it's in the name of the day. And so that's what you need to be doing today. Uh, and I hope you will come back at uh, 12, noon straight up. I believe Linda is on the agenda at 12. Amy, stop me if I'm lying. And we've got several more throughout the day. And then I'll be back at 7 to give you a little sneak peek. And I'm using, just so you know, I'm using one of my very favorite fun folds ever. So I think you'll like it. Hope you'll come back. I appreciate you spending part of your day with me. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.